Diamond in the Rough, written by Jen Toronto, narrated by Andrea Ems. Chapter 1. New York City. November 1885. Any smidgen of hope that her entrance into New York high society would be deemed a rousing success died the moment Miss Poppy Garrison's tiara became firmly attached to the sleeve of her dance partner. Wincing when Mr. Murray Middleton began turning her around in a circle, a step that would have certainly been easier to execute if her head wasn't stuck to his sleeve, Poppy listed to the left, but came to a rapid halt when Mr. Middleton abruptly stopped moving. Miss Garrison, what in the world are you about? He asked, in a voice no louder than a whisper. If you're unaware, the gypsy quadrille does not require any manner of peculiar posturing. Your deviation from the tried and true steps is drawing notice. He bent closer to her, an easy feat since she was still attached to a sleeve. I realize you're not overly familiar with the ways of the New York 400, but take it from someone in the know. It's not quite the thing to diverge from the expected steps. That could very well see you excluded from the smart set forever. Mr. Middleton then attempted to take a step away from her, a move that left her convinced she'd just become parted from a great deal of blonde hair that had once been styled in a most elegant manner, but now must be looking nothing less than frightful. I'm not posturing she managed to whisper back, even though she felt the distinct urge to release a howl of pain, since her head was now stinging dreadfully. I'm stuck. Stuck? Indeed, to your jacket, or at least my tiara is. A curious circumstance to be sure, but perhaps if I give you a twirl, you'll become unstuck. Before Poppy could utter a single protest to what was certainly a horrible idea, Mr. Middleton surged into motion, giving her a very enthusiastic twirl. Fire raced over her scalp as the tiara was yanked from her head, taking numerous strands of her hair with it in the process, even as the tiara remained firmly attached to Mr. Middleton's sleeve. Then, for some unfathomable reason, Mr. Middleton gave her another twirl, sending her careening away from him and into the crowd of guests assembled on the edge of the dance floor located on the top floor of Delmonico's. Mr. McAllister swung his attention to Mr. Middleton, who was still trying to tug the tiara in question from his sleeve. Mr. McAllister snapped his attention back to Poppy. How is it possible your tiara became attached to Mr. Middleton's sleeve in the first place? Poppy shot a look to Mr. Middleton, noticing that his cheeks were stained a telltale shade of red which stood out vividly against a complexion that was unusually pale, and in stark contrast to the lightness of his blonde hair. She did not know Mr. Middleton well, having only made his acquaintance the week prior, after her grandmother had received a last-minute invitation from Mr. McAllister, inviting Poppy to participate in the gypsy quadrille. Her grandmother, Mrs. George Van Rensselaer, known to her closest confidants as Viola, had been beside herself with glee over that coveted invitation. Poppy, on the other hand, had accepted the invitation with a great deal of wariness, because she'd never danced a quadrille before in her life. That wariness had only increased after she'd been shown the intricate steps of the dance at the family circle dancing class practice session. When she'd voiced her concerns to her grandmother after that session, claiming there was little hope she'd be able to master the steps on such short notice. Her grandmother had dismissed the concerns out of hand, stating that Van Rensselaer's were known for their ability to adapt to any situation. Viola, from that point forward, could not be persuaded to change her mind. She'd insisted Poppy practice the steps with Mr. Parsons, the family butler, every evening for hours. But even with that practice, Poppy had known she was ill-prepared to perform in front of New York High Society. She had a feeling her dance partner, Mr. Murray Middleton, had come to that very same conclusion, and must now be bemoaning that his original dance partner, Miss Susan Wells, had turned an ankle a week and a half before. After meeting Mr. Middleton, Poppy had been left questioning whether Miss Wells had truly suffered a great injury, 